welcome back to the stream. It's, what is it, Tuesday? Tuesday. <laughs> and you know what that means. It's time for perpetual motion, the class where we never stop moving, the class where I have sun perfectly positioned on my face, apparently. I'm just gonna, hey, hey, chat, let's wrap. Um, I'm just gonna sit here awkwardly and keep moving my face out of the way. Hi, everybody. Uh, how are you? Welcome to a brand new week of 2020, the year that doesn't end. Uh, oh joy. But it is week two of October, which is very exciting because it means that we get to build on what we did last week. Um, which means that we already have a sense of what the structure of class is, which is good. And today is going to give us the opportunity to push ourselves a little harder and challenge ourselves a little more uh, on all of that stuff that we did last week and see how we are, how we're feeling about it changes from week over to week, which is super exciting. I'm excited anyway. I, <laughs> probably a good thing that I can't see any of your faces, but you know, I've got a great setup of stuff uh, just outside of the view of the camera. A very dear friend of mine just had their birthday party via Zoom and they, they made the first part of it um, like a, a, a save the world adventure party where uh, we were all in Discord and we were in different channels and we were in different time periods and we were trying to uh, save the world from capitalism using the power of music. And uh, I was in ancient Greek times, so I had this lovely crown, it's excellent uh, fake grapes. <laughs> and uh, and some candles, and then there's just a lot of scrolls and twine over there. So I feel like I should do something with this for um, for Halloween or something. Oh my goodness, Halloween is coming up, and it's going to be a Friday. No, it's a Saturday, which means it's a class day, which means that if we feel like getting up and getting silly on a Saturday, uh, we'll probably have to have a costumed class. Yes, it was a great party, and so much fun. Honestly, the most fun I've had at a party, you know, since the plague times started, it felt, it felt so fun and far more natural. It was really well designed so that we had small rooms where people could talk and not feel like they were going crazy. And we had bigger rooms where everybody could sort of be in the same space. Um, and it was super awesome. Super awesome. So if you have a birthday coming up, I highly recommend time traveling adventure parties uh, where you're saving the world from capitalism through using the power of music. Um, Woohoo! <laughs> but that's not where today we're saving the world through uh, from capitalism through the power of exercise as we lean into Rocktober. So perpetual motion day is our class where we never stop moving. Uh, if for some reason this is your first class, Welcome. Weird time to join because we are doing Rocktober, which means that we're sort of building um, over and over. I know, very specific. Uh, I'll give you more details on the story later. It was so much fun. Um, but if this is your first time to Perpetual Motion, what we mean when we say that we never stop moving is quite literally that. So uh, usually when we do a hit class, when the final buzzer sounds, we would stop moving, take a drink, rest a little bit for a couple minutes, and then go with our next timer. With today's class, when that final buzzer goes, you go into the act of rest exercise, which is cross jacks, and I'll demonstrate that when it comes time to do so. Um, and so you keep moving the whole time. So it is basically, it is the uh, half marathon of hit classes, essentially. Uh, because just like in, you know, any sort of a race that you're doing, longer term race, you need the stamina so that you can keep doing the movement the whole time. You don't want to be having to like stop and gasp and drink water and then keep going again. Have to make up time. Oh God. Sorry. I took a nap right before class. <laughs> I'm still coming out of it. Um, but yeah, so Everybody hopefully is prepared for that. Good times. Let's go through our pre-class checklist. Ah, and we've got our giant thing of water. Mm. 
you don't have a giant thing of water, get a giant thing of water. Water is important. I have not been hydrating well, and I've been trying to be better over the last couple of days, and I've noticed a difference. Hey, so all those things I keep telling you to do, they're actually good to do. Who knew? Um, make sure you got your comfy clothes on. Mine are just washed because I had a panicked moment at about 2.30 when I went, oh yeah, uh, I haven't washed any of my exercise clothes and I kind of need them. Uh, you got a mat or a mat sized space on your floor. And if you use a fitness wearable, now it's the time to turn it on using that high intensity interval training setting uh, or whatever is closest on your particular item. I've got the Apple Watch. It's got that exact setting, so it's perfect. Um, yeah, I, I keep looking back at this at this crown. I don't think I'm going to work out in it today. I'll save working out in costume for our Halloween class, um, which will be intense. That'll be like, that'll be the final week of October. And that will literally close out October for us. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's going to be so fun. We're totally going to do a costume Saturday morning class. And it gives us a reason to come up with a costume because, you know, yeah. Remember back in April when we all thought that Halloween was still going to be a thing that we got to do? Sigh. All right, let's get our brains back here, present, out of the what could have beens, for there are many of them, and if we go down that road all day, we will just make ourselves sad. So let's not make ourselves sad. Let's make ourselves fit and strong and awesome by starting off with our warm up. So, mm. yeah, usual warm up time. Let me. Get the timer up. No, not the calculator up. No, not my podcast up. Hey, timer. Okay. So it takes a lot to get me organized for this class, guys. I hope I hope you understand how much stuff happens behind, behind the camera. But I did sweep and you know, there is a difference, but there's also definitely still dust on the floor because cleaning is a fool's proposition. It is a Sisyphean task that you will never be finished with. And on that note, let's start our warm up. So everybody on your mats, on your backs, one foot crossed over the opposite knee. As soon as that horn goes off, we will begin with hip rocks and bridges. Hey, just like this. Here we go. So we're still gonna have the lighting get super funky as the stream goes on. However, um, I have located a couple of options for uh, like beginner's lighting kit. Um, now I just need to actually purchase it, which I will hopefully do tonight or tomorrow uh, so that that can get here sometime soonish. Um, at the very least before uh, the daylight savings switch over happens and we really get screwed because as soon as that happens, there will just not be sun for any part of class. Uh, the sun will be totally done, done sun, and that will bum me out a lot because uh, that is basically my lighting plan right now, as you, as you well know. Also, just, you know, it's depressing when it gets dark so early, uh, you know, and I, I grew up in Hawaii, which doesn't do daylight savings. And so I, um, well, I was in New York, New York state for almost a decade first. And so I at least knew what it was, but I had gotten well out of the habit by the time I went to college. And uh, let me tell you that first, that first winter, in, in college was a revelation and not a particularly good one. We were just like, oh my God, it feels like all hope is gone. I remember my, um, I remember my sophomore year where uh, I had, second semester I had this class that I absolutely hated and it was, uh, 
it was a two and a half hour seminar and it was in a basement room in one of the uh, one of the buildings and it was uh, 2 30 to 5 I think or 2 to 4 30 something like that uh, and this was second semester so it was right in in winter time so you know it was the kind of thing where we would go down into this basement, have this two and a half hour class that was just awful, and then come out of the basement, everything was dark, and was like, abandon all hope. All hope is lost, my friends. So if you, like me, are someone who is impacted by the lessening of light in the winter seasons, then, uh, then stick with class. Try, do, do what you can to stick, stick with me through the winter with class because, you know, we, we, uh, we can get a lot of benefit out of exercise. And, uh, you know, we, for, for those of us who struggle with sadness, struggle with depression during, during the winter, having something that we can count on, that we enjoy, um, and that is good for us is really awesome. So let's, uh, let's make a pact here and now on this, hello, on this, the second week of Rocktober. Let's make a pact that we are going to stick together through the winter. We're going to do class. We're going to remind ourselves that we are super awesome. No matter what, we're going to be kind to ourselves on the days when we come to class and we're just feeling really low and we're gonna remind ourselves that just showing up is a success and that our success criteria for class does not have to be the exact same every single week and it also doesn't have to be the exact same as anybody else taking class and it's entirely yours to determine um and you know I think this will be hopefully a better winter than many of them have been. Um, Cause if we can, if we can stick together, if we can keep doing this work, I think that we will have a good time. We will keep ourselves fit and active. And you know, once uh, the days start getting noticeably longer again, then man, we are gonna, be able to take advantage of that. That's going to be so awesome. All right. Flipping over to the other side. Doing our second round of leg exercises. Starting here with good old Jane Fonda. Uh, we do love Jane. Doing our nice side lift, making sure that our body is in a nice straight line. Okay, so check in on that. If you are still struggling to sort of feel how that is supposed to feel, if you don't have a good uh, sense of what your body feels like when it is in that straight line, then I recommend using the side of your mat, just lining up nicely along it. It gives you nice, a nice benchmark to go, okay, I can be pretty confident that my body is straight. Um, and just and then just concentrate on how that feels and you know slowly but surely work on being able to get yourself into that position without needing the extra assistance and it takes a while it's all training though you know we talk about how important it is to get that knowledge of where your body is in space that spatial awareness uh, is going to serve you so well in everything you do from a fitness perspective. And this is a great place to start it, right here in the warm up when we're still pretty chill. You know, we're not uh, breathing heavy. We don't have a lot of other things occupying our minds. We're still at the beginning of class, so we're still super fresh. Um, we haven't run through a ton of our energy. So, so now is a great time for you to start picking up on those cues on, okay, this is, this is what mu the muscle engagement feels like when I'm in this position. This is where 
my legs feel like they are in relation to my torso. And all of that stuff is stuff that you can learn and you can identify, work it into subconscious processing, and then when I tell you to lie on your side in a straight line, you'll be able to do it without even thinking about it, okay? Ah, uh, super simple, yeah. Ugh, that was awkward. Um, but here we are on our last run through, so, oh my God, there is still dust on the snow. It truly is, it's just a losing battle. Anybody, anybody who is super obsessive about cleaning, I, I salute you because every, every time that I do bits of cleaning, I'm once again struck with how I, it just never stops. There, it, you never run out of things to clean and that just seems miserable. Um, but, oh my goodness, now we're moving into waking up our hips and our backs, which if you, like me, have been sitting in a chair for most of the day, your hips and your backs uh, probably could use a little stretching, a little love, and that is what we are here to do. So remember to keep your forearms firmly planted on the ground for these scorpion twists. They do not lift up, so if you can't twist all the way to here without your elbow coming up, then you can't go that far yet, all right? So it provides you a nice uh, way to measure your current back flexibility and a really good way to sense when you're making progress. All right, all right. Do to do, grabbing our imaginary PVC pipe and doing our nice big torso rotations, switching directions every couple of rotations. Do to do, and making sure that we get nice and evened out, making sure that the movement is all being generated from your hips, okay? So we are not, um, we are not generating the movement by moving our arms and then following. Our arms are staying in the exact same position relative to our heads throughout the whole motion. So it's all movement from the hips. Just bending over from the hips, everything else stays pretty much in the same alignment with everything else from when I'm standing to when I'm all the way down there going through that bottom part of the position. All right. And now still holding our imaginary PVC, we do our squats. Our first round of squats. We have a lot of squats in today's class, as you know, so make sure that you are paying attention to your form this is our first opportunity to check in. Are your knees going straight over your feet or are they trying to cave in towards one another at any point in there? If they are, narrow your stance a little bit and then keep going and go, okay, yeah, I can maintain this and do this as long as it takes to build that strength out until you can widen the stance again and see if you are able to make it through safely with your knees straight over your feet. All right, cast down those poles. I always do that, uh, <laughs> I always do the arm motion because, you know, when I'm teaching or taking class in person, um, we actually have the poles at the BRC. <laughs> and so, I have this just muscle memory, uh, you know, after I finish those squats, you throw the pole down on the floor and, uh, and go into the Samson stretches. I can't really make that transition without throwing down the pole, even though the pole right now is totally imaginary because I don't have any PVC pipe in my apartment. Um, so, yeah, you see, this is one of the reasons why it's so important that we focus on form. Because 
whatever we're doing really gets burned in there, you know? You learn it, you memorize it, and you default to it when you're not paying conscious attention, right? And so if you're, um, if what you are uh, teaching your subconscious and your muscle memory is bad form, then you are putting yourself in the position of being far more likely to injure yourself because when you're not actively thinking about what you're doing, you fall into a habit of doing it unhealthily, you know? And all of that training stays with us for a while. I mean, it's been over half a year since the last time I taught or took this class in person, and yet here I am still throwing down this pipe that doesn't exist. Um, so if, you, if you're ever like, oh my God, why does she talk about form all the damn time? Well, that's why. This is why I talk about form all the damn time because it is so important to focus on because if we have good form, if we start from there, then we have built ourselves a really strong foundation that's going to allow us to keep moving and keep exercising for much more of our lives. And that's my goal, you know. My goal isn't uh, to be an Olympian or to win a race or anything. My goal is to lead an active and a fit life filled with movement and that I can continue that for as long as possible. And honestly, we can continue it for a long time. Um, you know, there is so much research uh, about the benefits of exercise um, and the benefits of starting an exercise plan, even late in life, especially late in life. You know, we have these sort of cultural pictures of, uh, you know, we get older and we just can't move, can't do everything that we used to be able to do. And, you know, sometimes that's correct. But uh, if you start an exercise program, even if it's been years since you've done one, even if you're, you know, in your 60s, 70s, 80s, the benefits that you will see are enormous, you know? And if it's a different kind of program than you would do in your younger years, but that does not make it any less effective. So let's do our best to keep ourselves moving, fit, and active for as long as we can. Uh, all right, when that horn goes off, we will move into cross jacks. So it's basically kind of like the jumping jack in the legs where I jump them out and I jump them in, one foot crossed in front of the other, and then out and in again, change which foot is crossed in front. And our arms are just going out and in the same way. Uh, if you want some modifications, you can do the arm crosses, but just kick the feet forward. Or you can just jump back and forward like that. I'm okay with any of those options. Just don't stop moving. That's the main thing. Forgot to turn on this light and it is very rapidly going to become important. 
All right. Remember that even though you're still moving, and even though you don't get to stop moving, that does not mean that you shouldn't still be drinking water. So make sure your water bottle is somewhere within super easy reach of a standing position since our active rest is always going to be cross jacks, which means it's always going to be a standing position. Okay. Um, you'll get very good at drinking water while bouncing around, um, which if you've ever run a race is a skill. It's a skill to be able to drink water while bouncing up and down and moving, uh, and to manage to not choke on it, uh, or spill more than you drink is, uh, it's a challenge. Mm. All right, my friends. So last week we did all 30 second perpetual motion intervals. This week we are going to alternate back and forth between 45 seconds and 30 seconds. Okay. So we're going to be doing the same groupings of exercises. Just, uh, some of them will be 45 second work intervals. Some of them will be 30 second work intervals. And we are going to start with a 45 second work interval. So our first set, just to quickly remind you, we start with the, I start with pushing these damn puzzle pieces back together. Oh uh, yeah, I need to, <laughs> I need to upgrade this setup for myself too, obviously. Um, oh God, so many things to upgrade. All right, so uh, the three exercises, we've got our wide lunge with the knee turn. So turn, back to lunge, turn, back to lunge. We've got TikToks. So out and up, out and up, out and up, out and up. And we've got push-ups. Any version, just making sure that the elbows are staying right by your sides the whole time and that shoulders directly over wrists so that you have that nice, safe shoulder stability, okay? Um, if you're new in class, I know I'm not explaining things hugely because this is part of an ongoing program and everybody, we, we need to move quickly, but uh, I will be doing stuff along with you, so you can always look up at the screen and hopefully I'll still be doing things. So 45 second intervals, starting with our wide lunge, squat, hey, so turn that knee in and out, in and out. Remember a few form notes. We want those knees going straight over the feet, okay? My feet are turned out. If you are struggling to keep your knees over your feet when they're that turned out, you don't have to turn them out as far, okay? And that can help. And then when we turn this knee in, we basically want these two knees to be parallel going forward. And then back to the center, out and out, in and out, etc., etc. All right, immediately down. Remember, perpetual motion. So we are taking as little time as possible to shift from exercise to exercise, okay? So make sure that you're not trying to like uh, sneak a little bit of rest in there. That's fine, right? To sort of make my way down, get situated, uh, and then go. You want it to be down and moving within a second or two so that you can really maintain uh, all of the timer for exercise. Okay, and remember, we're also trying to keep moving the whole time, 
So, you know, there are a lot of ways that we try to sneak breaks into our exercise. One of them is just when we're shifting between positions, and one of them is in the middle of an exercise, you know, with push-ups, for example, if I just hang here for a little bit, and then I do another one, like, okay, I'm gonna hang here, you know, that's, that's me <laughs> trying, to, trying to shove a, a rest in there, okay? And that is an important skill for some activities, but it's not what we're going for right now, okay? What we are going for right now is continuous movement, all right? So I go back to the like half marathon metaphor a lot because you know if you're running a half marathon, you're still moving. You can slow down the tempo. That's absolutely something you can do. But if I were to stop, well, then I'm just stopped, you know? It's a lot more obvious when you're running. It can be easier to rationalize it when we're doing something like push-ups. But you really do want to be moving the whole time, okay? No matter what you are doing, you want to be moving the whole time. And you can be moving slowly, but you want to be moving, all right? So that's going to be one of our challenges to ourselves over the course of these few weeks is really, you know, we're taking our October to really challenge ourselves, really focus on what we can do to break through some of the mental plateaus that we may have, um, to break through some of our brain's tendency to really just get into an equilibrium and go, all right, cool, I found my equilibrium. I don't have to try anymore uh, because I know I can do this with the minimum amount of effort. You know, and quite frankly, that, that should never be our goal, you know? We want to be, we want to be putting in effort. We want to be showing ourselves how amazing we can be and how amazing, what amazing things we can accomplish. And, you know, sometimes we don't have the mental energy for it. You know, if people, if you struggle with anxiety or depression, any of those things, you know that there are days when you don't feel like you have the energy to do anything. And that's why I talk about how our success criteria changes from class to class. You know, if I'm having a really bad day mentally, then my success criteria might just be, hey, did I make it on the mat today and teach class? Yes? Then awesome. I have succeeded. So, you know, it is always important to remember that. And I feel like that gets lost a lot in fitness messaging. Um, and I think that sometimes as a teacher, I go a little too hard in the opposite direction. I want you always to remember that you, <laughs> wherever you are is okay and it is far safer and healthier for you to acknowledge where you are than to try and hide it away or tamp it down. But we also need somebody, uh, whether it's ourselves or an external voice, to remind us to push, to remind us that we do have all of this capacity, all of this capability, and that, you know, frequently our brains, which are trying to protect us, uh, but frequently they end up uh, convincing us that we can't achieve things that we really can achieve. And because of that, we lose opportunities, you know? And we don't push ourselves to be the fantastic, kind, caring, strong people 
that we can be. So as you stand up and get back into your cross jacks, however you're doing those, I do want you to remember and that you have so much capacity and you know sometimes we need that push we need that little jump start to get us going and i'm going to be that person and this month is going to be that month where this month in particular really specifically we are focusing on challenging ourselves and on finding out what we can achieve and you know i think it's going to be awesome i think we're going to achieve a lot and i'm really excited Woo! All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, water is great, friends. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Oh, all right. Well, that was a good first first run through. The 45 seconds makes a big difference, you know. It is 15 additional seconds. Um and that definitely adds some difficulty on. That's a lot of extra time to keep doing an exercise and then to have to move directly into the next exercise. So well done. <laughs> For this next one, we're going back to the 30 second, so it'll feel a little bit more restful. Um, so as a refresher on what the exercises are, we've got our front plank, from the elbows, so shoulders directly over elbows, and then just hanging out in that front plank. And then we've got uh, our second and third exercises are the same exercise, just different sides where we have our, I should show it this way, we're going from a lunge, similar to that Samson stretch lunge, arms in front, and then standing up to a knee pull, and down, and up, and down, and up. And then when the horn goes, switching to the other side, all right? So those are three exercises. So everybody cross jack back onto your mats, getting ready for that first plank. Uh, and so remember, you don't get to get down into position, you're still jumping, and then you hear that sound, and you get down into the plank as quickly as possible, okay? So making sure that you're not stopping the exercise early, because remember our bare minimum, starting on time, stopping on time, and doing the exercise correctly. And Part of stopping on time for our uh, perpetual motion sets is making sure that you do not stop the exercise until you hear the horn telling you to switch to the next exercise, okay? So focus on that, particularly uh, when you have an exercise where you're going from uh, the standing cross jacks up to, uh, or down rather, to uh, a position on the floor. You know, the, uh, the transitions are always hardest when you're changing planes like that. So, you know, we're not just going from one standing leg to the other, we're going from a standing position all the way down to the floor. And that adds additional complexity in. So make sure that you've thought about it. Make sure you've thought about that transition and about how it should feel as you make it, okay? so. Always thinking, you know, our brains, our brains want to be engaged in this process. And our journey, fitness-wise, 
is, you know, basically it's taking in new information, working that information into our subconscious processing so that our brain's conscious processing centers no longer have to actively work with it, and then giving those conscious processing centers new things to think about, okay? So your first day of class, your conscious processing is focusing real hard on just what are the exercises um, and trying to make sure that it knows what the hell is going on. And then next class, you have a better sense of the exercises. So now you can turn that conscious processing more towards, okay, when she talks about the bare minimum, when she talks about starting on time, you know, making sure that I am starting on time, that I am taking the minimum amount of time from when I start hearing that horn to, uh, to get in a position and to do my exercise. And then, you know, once we have that worked in, then we go, okay, what are my goals? Maybe my goal is a certain number of reps that I want to complete. And so then it becomes, all right, focusing in on the number of reps that I'm doing, or maybe it's focusing in on just uh, feeling like my stamina is improving. So feeling like I can get to the end of a work interval without getting to that place where I feel like I am about to lose my form, um, you know? And there are just so many things that we can use to stimulate and keep our brains engaged, you know? At some point, we go, all right, it's time for some new exercises. It's time for a new timer structure, uh, a new class setup, you know, all of that stuff. So you just have to keep paying attention and getting creative, all right? Everybody's back in their uh, active rest. So doing those cross jacks, whatever they may be. Oh, geez. That was awful. Uh, uh, why do you hurt me like this? Uh, God damn it. Oh man. Yep, there we are folks, a good plains pun. Uh, drink your water. Mm. All right. We're moving along. We're getting sweaty. I've, I've already, you know, complained to all of you about the AC being switched over. So every class is sort of a, a sauna class for me now. Hey, um, that's all right, that's all right. This is the price we pay for having semi-decent audio um, because believe me, if my door was open right now, you would hear nothing but the whir of traffic outside the porch. All right. So we're going back to 45 second work intervals, my friends, and we're doing some planks because you remember our next set of exercises. Uh, first two exercises are side planks. So again, shoulder directly over elbow, legs extended out, get those hips way up in the air, other arm up in the air, and just hold that position. And then we switch to the other side. And then our third exercise is turtle jumps. So up on the shoulders, up on the feet, and jump, and repeat. Whee! Okay? So those are the three. And we're doing 45 seconds, so a longer interval than we did last week. So everybody cross jack back on your mats again. We're gonna be getting down into a plank when the horn goes. So quick motion, all right? And making sure that our hips are not sinking down 
over the course of these 45 seconds. We want them to stay way up. So you're going to feel a lot of engagement in the glute that is closer to the floor. Okay? That glute is working hard right now to keep all of this up in this held position. Make sure that you're breathing. Remember, when we get into held positions, we have a tendency to try and hold our breaths because we think that that's going to make uh, the process easier. Um, it's not, and you're doing yourself a disservice because your body still needs that oxygen. It needs to break down fuel sources and convert them into energy, and it can't do that without oxygen. So make sure that you are still breathing, all right, the whole time. And if you notice that you're holding your breath, then don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't know a better way to say it. Don't hold your breath, folks. That's not what you want to do. Don't let those hips sink down. 45 seconds is a much longer time. I know. Woo. And then we go into our turtle jumps. Remember, if you struggle to roll directly up onto the feet, you can use a hand to help push you up. Um, one thing I don't talk about a ton, but you do want, when you're rolling up onto the feet, you want those knees to try and be still going as straight forward over the feet as possible. So try not to let them, again, try not to let them cave in or cave out, okay? Um, and that's one of those things that it takes a while to even notice on our own, but it's important. It's important. We want to be protecting our knees no matter what we're doing, and, uh, and that's a big one. It gets easier when you get used to rolling up onto the feet using the momentum. So the more you can practice that, not having to push yourself, uh, the better it'll be. Because frequently, I mean, there's a component of just not a lot of flexibility in the Achilles that can cause problems with trying to roll directly up onto the feet. But um, if you're not generating enough power and momentum off of the roll onto the shoulders, that can also be part of the problem where you're slowing yourself down and then you're like pushing yourself up, sort of really manhandling yourself up and then you end up in all sorts of weird, weird places that you didn't intend to go. Whereas if I go up here and then I'm like, like that, then I just made it right up onto my feet. I didn't have to worry. My knees kept going straight over um, and it was totally chill. So oh, yeah, now that you are back around two turtle jumps, I want you to focus in on that. That'll be a good, uh, a good thing to focus on over these next few weeks um, as we're digging into these exercises so much more intensely. Really check in on, uh, on your turtle exercises. We do a lot of them. You know how much I love them. And so the more that you can do to really improve that component of the form, uh, the easier and the more fun, I think, that they will be. So really dig into that. Oh, and here we come back around for our final time through with our planks. So the other good thing about breathing while you're doing this is that when you inhale, you can visualize the oxygen going to wherever you're feeling the most intense sensation. So uh, for many of us, that's probably in the glute that is closer to the floor. So just as, as you breathe in, just take that oxygen right to that place 
And then as you exhale, just try and exhale all of that intensity out. And that can really help you. Another thing that you can do is, you know, we have this arm pointing up towards the ceiling. So we visualize that it's getting pulled, that there are strings attached to your fingertips that are pulling you up. We can also visualize that for the hip. There's a string attached to my hip and it is going up into the ceiling and it is continuing to pull my hips up so that I'm not able to let them sag down, okay? So there are a lot of visualization tricks that you can use in, especially in held positions that can feel so much more intense and uncomfortable. Um, you know, at least when we're doing something that requires constant movement, we have, uh, we have that movement to distract ourselves from some of the intensity and some of the discomfort. When you're holding a position, you don't really have that option. You just have to really be tuned in to that discomfort. So any visualization tricks that you can use to uh, make that easier are gonna be great. All right, back up into those cross jacks. Oh, Whew. oh man, let me tell you, holding your breath, not great for held positions. Having to talk the whole time, also not that fun. <laughs> because I'm not able to take the big, deep breaths that I would want to take. Oh my goodness. All right, it's water time. Oh yeah, water's great. Okay, my friends, we're going back to 30 seconds for our second to last set, um, which is awesome. <laughs> love, love having those 30 second ones sprinkled in. Um, as you may already suspect, that will get less and less frequent uh, over the next couple of weeks because we're challenging ourselves. Err. Um, so, our next set, we have ankle reaches. So, flat on the floor, legs up, engaging the core to lift your shoulders and your arms up so that you can tap the outside of that opposite ankle. Then, we have turtle waves. So, roll up, roll up. Jump back to that plank, wave push up, jump forward, and repeat, okay? And then third exercise, we have squat with the knee raise. So the feet in that around shoulder width position, squat, stand with the knee up, down, and other side, down, other side etc etc all right cross jack back to the mat <sighs> and as soon as you hear that horn go we get down on the floor and we start our ankle reaches Hi yeah so how's everybody feeling on transitioning from one exercise to the other hopefully this week is easier than last week because you know what the exercises are. So again, you were able to move and you, you know, I'm sure needed refreshers, but you were able to move some of that out of the uh, conscious processing space and into the unconscious so that you didn't have to focus as much 
time and attention on it, which is awesome. So hopefully you're feeling pretty good about moving from exercise to exercise. Oh, what was that third one? Oh, squat with the knee raise. See? I, ah, and look at me talking about hopefully you can remove this out of conscious processing. Uh, clearly, I haven't been able to do that quite yet. So, a good reminder that if you haven't yet, that's okay, because even the teacher messes that up. Oh, all right, back through second time. Oh man, I really want to, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is get a thick mat, similar to the ones we use at the gym, and have that in the center of this, rather than, uh, rather than the puzzle pieces, because they definitely, as time has gone on, have much more of a tendency to pull apart than they did when I first started using them. So, whew, fun times. Sorry for all of the futzing with my mat that I have to do, but, you know, again, perfect is the enemy of good, and we're doing a great job today. So, I'm not going to worry too much about not having the perfect setup. I just, you know, need to know for myself that I have to pay a little more conscious attention to the surface that I'm on to make sure that I'm not, uh, to make sure that I'm not, you know, stepping down and finding something going flying out from under me that I didn't expect. So, uh, just another, another reason to pay attention to what I'm doing. And really, that's important. We all should be paying attention to whatever, what we're doing here, uh, especially on our third time through these exercises, making sure that we're doing those form check-ins. Am I actually using my core to lift myself up? Because that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And if I'm not, then I need to check back in and make sure that I use the core rather than trying to compensate with other muscles or limbs. But now we're doing our turtle legs, oh, having lots of fun. Soon we'll get up and do our squat to the knee raise. Look at me remembering the correct exercise. Huzzah! Always good. Uh, you can do a nice exhale as you stand and lift the knee like that. Inhale as you're going down. Exhales on moves that require power can be really useful. And then back to our cross jacks. Uh, whew. All right, my dears, holy crow. Oh, we're doing so well, so friggin' well. Getting real close. Just one more, one more set. And it will be 45 seconds, so it's gonna be intense. It's gonna be an intense way to uh, close out class and then we're not gonna stop once it's done. We're gonna go straight into calf awareness. So when the final horn goes on this set, I'll have you cross jack as I quickly set up the next timer. And then we will dive into our, uh, our calf awareness and then we will be done, all right? So I believe in you. You've been going for almost an hour, you were doing Great. 
okay? You've totally got this. And once we start doing calf awareness, it's a great way for us to cool down, get our breath under control again, get our heart rate under control again, and just bring ourselves down from the workout. So let's get ready. Our exercises, our toe squats, which I trust you know, skips, which I trust you know, and burpees, which once again I trust you know. So toe squats, down and up, letting those heels come off the ground, skips here in place, and burpees. Y'all, we did burpees in the warm up. Um, all right, so going into our last full series, 45 second intervals. So as you're cross tracking away, let me make sure the timer actually starts. Cross jacking, getting ready for the toe squats, and going, okay? You want your feet about hip width for this. You don't want them too much wider. Um, and remember to engage the core as a stabilizing muscle group, okay? So that you're not letting any other parts of your torso sort of go off in directions that your feet and ankles are not expecting, all right? It's a lot of pressure to put on our feet and on our ankles especially since we're balancing on the ball of the foot, not even just on the, uh, not even on the full foot. So always remember that. But for now, we've moved into skips. Remember, you are hopping, so you should be bringing that foot off the floor, okay? Hop. Yep, there we go. And we're just going through a meadow, having a grand old time. Uh, not a care in the world, but what's this on the horizon? Why, it's burpees. That's what's on the horizon. Remember, nice big, victory clap at the top, particularly right now. We are almost to the end of class. We're feeling it. We're feeling that fatigue. We're feeling that exhaustion. And we need to be cheering ourselves on every way that we can. So one of the big ones, especially for burpees, is nice big victory clap every time you jump up, all right? I want you to be cheering yourself on. I want you to be so super proud of yourself every time that you jump up into the air after you do that wave push-up. But right now, you're doing toe squats again. So second time through, check in on that form. Remember, we want the form to be just as good by the third set as it is in the first set. And we're at the end of class, so we're already feeling a little tired, feeling a little fatigue. So now is the time to really dig in. Make sure you're taking in all of the oxygen you need to and start cheering yourself on, all right? We get those cheerleaders out for our final set, no matter what it is, because we have been exercising like crazy for the last hour. And this is perpetual motion, which means even when we weren't technically exercising, we were still moving. <coughs> we were still exercising. So we have been doing so much and we should be so incredibly proud of ourselves. You should be so incredibly proud of yourself because you've made it all the way through. You've made it all the way through, my friends. You are about to do your second run through burpees, and then we're just gonna have one more run through all of these exercises, and then we'll get to go into calf awareness and 
calm ourselves down, let ourselves breathe, and have a nice sort of cool down at the end of class. But we're not quite there yet. Where we are right now, we're pounding our way down the final hill where we can see the Capitol building. We're getting ready to hook around it, and soon we will come around it and we will see that finish line. And we will know that it is almost time to get ourselves to the finish line, use that last burst of energy, dig down in for that last bit of energy as we start this final push in. Anyone who's ever uh, done the Hash House Harriers before, this is our on in, all right? We are here heading in. The finish line is in sight. The shower, the post-exercise shower is awaiting you. A delicious dinner is awaiting you. Lots and lots of water is awaiting you. And all you have to do is get through this last chunk of stuff and you are going to do it, my friend. You are gonna do it and it's gonna be amazing. Amazing. All right, back to skips. Our last time for skips. So skips are a relatively easy exercise. I don't talk about form with them a ton, but make sure you are getting a little bit of a hop, okay? You're not jumping five feet into the air, but your toes are leaving the ground. And if they're not, I need you to dig in. I need you to find that last bit of energy and I need you to use it right now. We don't have any other sets that we are saving our energy for. It is all here. So whatever energy you have left as we head down from around the Capitol building and towards that finish line, I want you to use it. I want you to keep going. I want you to keep victory clapping. I want you to keep reminding yourself that you are doing an amazing job and that you have, have made it through a full hour and that in just a second, you are gonna get up and just move, not even cross jack, just move for me while I get that last timer set up. And as soon as you hear the horn, balance flat on one foot. And let's do our calf awareness. Oh, all right, so let's take this first run to get our breath back under control, which helps us get our heart rate back under control. Remember, we want to do all of the micro adjustments to keep this balance from our ankle and our foot. So make sure that you're engaging all of the stabilizing muscle groups, core, glutes, quads on the standing leg and nice deep breaths. We've got all of the weight of the body under control. And when we hear that horn, we'll just go and do the same thing on the second side. Like so. Yeah, so you should have your breath back under control now. No more panting. No more feeling like your heart's going a mile a minute. All right. Check in with those stabilizing muscle groups. The, for these types of held positions, it is really easy to lose track of some of those groups and you feel it. If you're there and you're like, why am I suddenly wobbling so much? Check in, is your core still engaged? Are your glutes still engaged? Are your quads still engaged? And 
I'm willing to bet at least one of them isn't. All right, and the timer goes off again. Back to the first side, balancing up on the ball of the foot. Okay, so balancing on that ball. Again, we want all the same things from this that we did from the flat balance. However, we also recognize that this is much more difficult and intense. So if you're up in the balance and you're like, I, I can't maintain this, I'm gonna fall over, just try to control your descent and reset and keep going. Check in on the stabilizing muscle groups again. All right, you still want to be using them. And in fact, it will make this a lot easier if you do. So check in on them. Don't, uh, don't leave them hanging. All right, now we're on the other side, doing the same thing, discovering that this is either our stronger side for balance or our weaker side for balance. So, whichever it is, acknowledge that, and then keep doing what you're doing. And check in. Maybe today you feel like you have made a huge breakthrough in your balance that you hadn't felt like you had made in the last few weeks. So, be excited about that, all right? Be excited about your breakthroughs. And when the horn goes off again, back to that first foot, we go up on the ball, then rock back on the heel. So, up on the ball, back on the heel. Up on the ball, back on the heel. And we just keep going back and forth between those two the whole time. Just gotta shove that out of the way for myself. Uh, up on the ball, back on the heel. Yeah, so still balancing. Woo! You still want, again, check in on those stabilizing muscle groups because you still don't want, you don't want your torso going in directions you're not expecting. It will pull you with it and that will throw off the balance at best, and at worst, it may, uh, you know, knock you over, give you an injury, all of those things that we talk about a ton that we don't want to do. Switch sides, up on the ball, back on the heel, back and forth, keep breathing, just because you're concentrating doesn't mean that you shouldn't, keep breathing, okay? So, don't stop, can't stop, won't stop, bringing oxygen into our lungs as we go, as we work the calves, and you'll feel it, you'll feel it at this point. Nice, strong calf engagement, with a little bit of shin when we rock back on that heel. So when the timer goes off again for our final activity, both feet on the floor, rock back on those heels and don't let the toes come down until the end of the timer. So you wanna try and balance here if you can. If you need to shuffle around, that's fine. The only thing you can't do is let your toes come down. So this will definitely make you uh, very aware of your shins, okay? So keep breathing, keep trying to balance. You can let, you don't have to be trying to maintain a flat up and down position. You can balance with a little bit of a bend, okay? That's totally fine, we're not going for straight up and down here. 
All right, you have about 10 seconds left. Nice big breaths, keeping those toes up, balancing if we can, shifting if we can't. Two, one, ha. Ah. Holy crow, my friends. Wow. That was intense. Good, but intense. Oh, good job, everybody. Everybody grab your water. Make sure you're drinking it down. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, <clears throat> try not to drink it too quickly. <laughs> oh, what a great class. What a great class. What a great start to week two of Rocktober. I am, I am super ex uh, excited. I know for myself, <coughs> even just in um, calf awareness just then, I noticed, uh, I noticed an improvement, a breakthrough that I'd been frustrated about for a while. So I, I hope that everybody gets that experience at least once this month. Um, and I'm so excited to be doing this, to be going through this with you, with you fine folks. Ooh, I'm gonna drink some more water. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Uh beautiful twilight sky outside oh so gorgeous all right well there we go you made it through an intense class my friends and you crushed it is really all i have to say about that so well done well done thank you for being here with me for kicking off our work week our exercise week it's not i i suppose a monday so it's not you know, exact kickoff, but uh, it's still a great way to to start out the week. Let's just pretend the week started on Tuesday. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got three more classes this week. Uh, as usual, we've got tomorrow, Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, we've got Jump Around, our weekly cardio class. Friday at 6 p.m. we've got Functional Home Fitness where we do weight training using objects you can find around the house. Hello! And uh, on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. we've got the weekend kickoff which is our strength and stamina focused body weight class. And all of our classes are doing their own Rocktober sequences right now. So a lot of fun, a lot of intensity, a lot of challenge and um, if you're able to do a full series consistently, uh, it's going to be really awesome. So, ah, uh, so much fun. So much fun. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All of those handles are in my end card, but they're all variations on Blanche Case Fitness. Uh, my YouTube channel, Blanche Case Fitness, is where I upload the VODs for these streams. Um, and there's going to be a lot of supplemental... Uh, stuff going up there basically as soon as I have the lighting set up and can do slightly more professional looking videos. So head over to YouTube and subscribe if that's your jam. Um, if you want to help support me in continuing to make these streams, I do have a coffee account at Blanche Case Fitness. Donations are always appreciated. And uh, if you want to help me keep growing this community, getting ourselves to affiliate status and just get, you know, getting to the place where we can do lots of additional super fun stuff, then please do follow this channel. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your enemies, anybody who wants a good workout. Because <laughs> we have fun here. And uh, I, yeah, I'm always happy to be here. So thanks for joining me. The kickoff to week two of Rocktober. And uh, we'll see some of you back here tomorrow night. Mwah. Have a great night.